Hello, and welcome to this somewhat unusual edition of C++ Weekly. So in this episode, I'm going to cover Power C for the Commodore 64. And this is the first compiled language that I ever used, and I knew from reading things like Dr. Dobbs' journal that using C and C++, that's really what the cool kids did. Those were the languages where it was at. So I managed to actually find a copy of a C compiler while on a road trip in the United States at a bookstore in an outlet mall. It was a very random place to be to have found a compiler for the Commodore 64, but I immediately bought it. And then when I got back to my Commodore 64, I gave it a try. And now what you will see is a pretty straightforward uh, representation of how long it took to turn around a build and execute cycle on a Commodore 64. Now, I think this is the same C compiler that I used, but it was a really long time ago, approximately 30 years now. So I'm not 100% sure that it is the correct compiler, but I think it's pretty close, if not the same one. But needless to say, after you see how long this process took, you will see that I really did not go back to compiled languages for several more years until I had a considerably faster computer to execute them on. So check this out. So first I have to actually load the PowerC compiler, and that's how you would go about doing this on the Commodore 64, is this load quote asterisk quote comma comma one. And as you can hear, I have drive sound emulation enabled. I am doing this all in an emulator, but I am doing it at real speed of 100%. Once the emulator has been loaded, then I open the test C file that was provided to me with the compiler disk. And that is with an ed-like multi-mode editor. So I'm just gonna scroll through the file here and show it's, it's a pretty simple program. And again, this was one that was provided by the uh, compiler vendor. So cc.test.c, uh, I am just saying I want to compile this program. Now this is interesting because you would think, well, right now it's loading my C file, and it's not. It is, in fact, loading the compiler. And now it's asking me for the source disk. So it's assuming that I need to swap disk now to actually load test.c. But since this is on the disk provided by the compiler vendor, I don't actually have to hit swap disk, I just have to hit enter. And now it wants me to put the compiler disk back in, which you would have thought it would have already had the compiler, but I just hit enter again because again, it's the same disk. It's also interesting to point out here, 
well, now it asks for my object disk. So I have to swap disk to a clean formatted one that has space to actually write the object file to. So I've done that and I've pressed enter again. And if you look at the display here, the editor had custom designed fonts for things like open brace and close brace because these are things that did not exist in the Petsky character set. So in this display listing here, you see that it's actually the fat plus and uh, vertical pipe symbols. Okay, it has now actually written the object file to disk. I have a compiled object file, but it has not yet been linked. So to link it, I need to execute the linker. And of course the linker is not actually on this disk because I currently have the object disk in. So I have to go and swap back to the compiler disk and then type link again to actually get it to do the linking. Okay, I have loaded the linker. I haven't actually linked anything yet. And now I have to do a bit of editing. I have actually cut out a two minute segment where I am attempting to learn what is the correct sequence of steps here. So I'm loading the object file and then I need to tell it to properly link in all of the libraries. And that is done with the up arrow key on a real Commodore, but I am in an emulated Commodore. I don't have the same kind of key. Now, this is not the same as the cursor directional key. This is a different key on the keyboard that actually looks like an up arrow. So I hit it, but the uh, interface has gotten a bit out of sync, so I have to hit it again. Now at this moment, it is actually linking automatically all of the necessary library files. So I am now going to tell it what file name to actually write. Now, interestingly, this .sh actually means that it needs be a file that has to be launched from within the shell. But I do have an actual executable written, and now I can execute it with the test command. And there you go. That is the full process cycle for editing, compiling, linking, and executing on the Commodore 64 with one of its native C compilers. And uh, yes, I did this, I believe, exactly once before I shelved my compiler, and I really did not go back to it again until, um, well, never again on the Commodore 64. I didn't try C again until I was running Linux on a PC. So thanks for watching this special and unusual episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it.